Welcome back to the Battle for the Bridge Preserve. Today we are here with Gracie's Battery and they're going to give us a, a breakdown of the field artillery. And this here is Mr. Tony Slater and we're going to let him tell us about the battery. Glad to be here today folks to tell you about this. First thing I want to do is make sure we invite you all out to the Battle for the Bridges in September. Come see us. The artillery logistics is in the Federal Army each unit had six cannons in it, each battery divided into three sections. This particular unit here is a 12 pound mountain howitzer which used one horse to pull. The bigger 24 pound cannons had to have six horses to pull those. Each cannon crew consisted of 10 men. There was 100 men to each battery. The extra ones were the reserves. Now I'm going to stop it here and we're going to turn it over and we're going to show you different pieces on this cannon. This is Spencer Waters. He is going to give us a breakdown of the artillery piece. Today we are going to be talking about the different parts that make up a cannon. First we have the carriage. It is the main body of the cannon. Next we have the muzzle or face of the cannon. It's the part that the gunpowder comes out of. We have the barrel of the cannon, which is the main outside casing. The tube is located inside the cannon, that's where the round goes into. We have the vent, which is what we currently have a, what we call a prick, protruding out of. This is the implement we use to breach or puncture the round so that we may have fire and ignition to launch the round out of the cannon. This is the breech of the cannon. It is where the round goes into when it is put inside of the muzzle. This is the caseable. It can be used to lift the cannon, raise it up, or put it down. Now underneath this part is the elevation screw. It is how we elevate up or down the cannon so we can get a distance that we need to. This is the trail of the cannon. It is kind of a tail. The prolong is used to, if there's a steep embankment, to ease the cannon down, you know, in case of harsh conditions. This is the trail spike. It is what is used to move the cannon left and right is the horizontal movement of the cannon while as the elevation screw is the vertical. This implement is called a sponge and a rammer. The sponge is used to wet or cool down the cannon after it has been fired. It goes in like so. It is twisted and removed. The rammer end is actually what we use to push down the round when it is entered into the cannon. And we have on the opposite side the worm. It is the implement we use to remove the fired round because the actual round or the shell that comes out of the cannon ejects from the cannon, but the powder and the bag, or in this case when we reenact tin foil, is left inside of the cannon. So we need this tool to remove the previous round. Going like so, it would be twisted. Oh, got on something. And then it would be removed. And those are pretty much the basics of how the cannon fires. We could go into more elaborate detail, but I'm afraid we don't have that much time to do so. So next, we'll be talking about the logistics of actually firing the cannon. Here is Chris McMillan, and he's going to go through the logistics of the battery for us. Thank you. What we have here is what's known as a 12-pound mountain howitzer. It's called mountain howitzer because it's 
Smaller carriage, smaller barrel, makes it night weight and mobility, provides close-in fire support for infantry who needed it to get up and down these hills. Maximum range about 950,000 yards, spherical case 800, canister 300, 250. Now what they do, or what I would do, get in close as I could, support my infantry. We got about maybe 900 yards down range, I'd call for solid shot. Put as much on them as I could till they come within spherical case. Then we put some explosive rounds in the shrapnel, the like. And then once they get within 200, 300 yards, we'd load up canister, closer than that double canister. We want big gaps in those infantry ranks. As much damage as possible in a short amount of time. A good gun crew could get off three rounds a minute in heavy situation until that gun literally got hot enough to explode in which case they'd have to cool it down in any ways possible and then they could fall back maneuver with the infantry keep close contact with the infantry commander so they could direct them to where that fire was needed the most most of your battles were decided or artillery played a huge role in the outcome of those battles and they could be packed up quick tied to a horse, pulled around by rope by the men if they needed to. It's made them very versatile on the battlefield when compared to your larger field pieces. You say this gun looks small, but could do a lot of damage with a good crew. This is Anthony Waters, and he's gonna tell you a little bit about the different types of artillery shells. Thank you very much. Today I wanna to talk to you about the different rounds that our 12 pound mountain howitzer fires. The first round I want to talk to you about is a solid shot. This is basically a cannonball, a solid cannonball to be put into the cannon. It's used to knock down fortifications. It would be used to try to hit uh, enemy cannon and axles to disable it. Or you could actually skip this thing into advancing infantry and be like a bowling ball. I mean, it's pretty devastating. The second one I want to talk to you about is called a spherical case shot. This is actually, if you'll look at the diagram here, it's actually a hollow ball that is filled with ball bearings, usually these two smaller ones. And uh, you'll have pitch with gunpowder in it to fill this up. Then you'll have right here at the end, you will have what's called a fuse plug that will go down in it. Then you have a fuse, and basically this is like wax paper wrapped around gunpowder with some sort of gum resin in it. And if you look, you'll see these notches. Now full, this full one is a 10 second fuse. So when the commander would tell you, give me a case shot, four second fuse, the limber man would actually cut this down to the four second mark. Then he will place it into the round, push it in, and then it's fired. Now, when the gun fires, the fire that comes around this will ignite this fuse, and when it burns down, it will explode. The case shot was never used to just fire into the infantry to explode. This would actually be fired over. When it explodes, it will rain down all this hot shrapnel onto the uh, enemy. Now, the third one is, we're gonna talk to you about is the bad boy. This is called canister shot. Okay, this is basically like a coffee can and it's filled full of these ball bearings. Uh, a lot of times they, they would put nails in them or they would put uh, pieces of foundry stuff like where you get in the blacksmith shop and that's what it looks like. You'll see the interior of it. It's got your balls. And this basically turns a cannon into a shotgun. If this thing's fired out of a gun, it will clear a 30 foot path in oncoming infantry. Okay. Now our gun being a smooth board howitzer uses what's called fixed ammunition. Okay. Fixed ammunition means that when you've got your solid shot, this is actually what your solid shot will look like. Okay. Attached to the shot is called a sabot, which is just a wooden cup with a groove around it the reason that this thing is made, one, to steady it in the gun, two, to attach your powder bag, which I've got a picture I'll show you. 
right here. You've got your, your shot, your sabot, and then your powder bag attaches, meaning you know, the whole thing will slide down. Now, like this was said in the earlier video about puncturing, when you bring this round, it goes in and it gets slid all the way down. Okay, so your powder bag is actually at the end of your gun. Then when this is pricked, it will prick the powder bag and then we have a primer. Now, if you want to come in, this is basically the primer for the gun. It's a little tube with fulminate of mercury inside which burns really hot. And when it's pulled, it pops this, igniting the bag, and then it will fire. All of this, uh, all of these rounds are pretty devastating, but your canister shot is the worst. Like I said, it will, it will turn it into a shotgun. So I hope we've kind of influenced you today about what the, what the cannon's all about and getting you interested in artillery. And it's like we said before, we try to keep our stuff as accurate as we can. Uh, come to reenactments and see us, look us up. We give lectures on it and try to teach you. So I appreciate your time and you have a great day. God bless you.